Okay, we're going to talk about how to customize your controller per aircraft. Uh, you can do that. Uh, first to do that, we just simply have to go over to the control menu. You go over here to options. And then we're going to click over here on the far right, say controls, and go there. And we'll see a list of all the controls you have on your system. I'm not going to talk about modifying your keyboard control or your mouse control, but rather if you have an Xbox 360, or in my case, a, a Sidewinder Precision, uh, modifying the controls for those. Don't get me wrong, if you want to map different keystrokes and different mice controls for different aircraft, uh, go for it. But that would be a little much for my old brain. In addition, you could map every keystroke to be different for whichever button, but I'm not even going to do that on the controller. Instead, I'm going to concentrate on this. I'm going to concentrate on sensitivity. So each control can be mapped with how sensitive it is to your input. So we're going to take a look at this so you can see how you can set it up so that that particular aircraft doesn't overreact or underreact uh, to your input. So we're going to go into the controls now and talk about how we can create a custom profile. As you can see here, we go to the controller and it sets as default. That's the one it comes with. But we're going to set one for every aircraft. Uh, so this default one, uh, we're going to just take a look at it real quick. Here's the ailerons. Okay, and if you look up here, sensitivity, and this maps out how quickly your device responds to your input. Uh, quickly it speeds through its uh, access, left and right, up and down. So each of your joystick controls have basically two settings. One is how soon it responds, and then how quickly it responds. So if we click on one of our ailerons, you'll see here that we have sensitivity, and we also have the dead zone. So if we adjust this, you'll see the curve that demonstrates that. And if we change the dead zone, or the dead point, you'll see that it doesn't start responding until it reaches that particular position on the stick. And we're going to give each one of the dead zones a little bit of leeway. That way, if you touch a stick by accident, just barely touch it, it doesn't respond immediately. And that's important so that you don't, you know, accidentally bump it and your aircraft yanks off to one side or another. Uh, so dead zone is very important. So we do all that for you, all your controls. Now, depending upon your device, one stick will be for up and down, another stick might be for left and right, but they're all mapped out here. You'll see left stick here, X and Y controls, and you'll see the right stick as well. You just go up here to whatever it is, uh, and you want to be able to uh, change that. Now, I've searched for ailerons, so that's what's being displayed. Let's clear that. And you can search for any ones here, uh, depending upon what you're looking for. So here's elevator, for example. I want to make sure I'm looking at the elevator control. And by the way, you can reverse it from up and down uh, to reverse depending upon how you like it. But anyways, we're seeing looking at the same information. We see left stick, right stick. We see different uh, sensitivities based on that. And once you're done with a particular control, you just click on the done, done button here at the bottom, and it'll save those settings. But then you're not done. You have to save them uh, to the actual profile. Okay, uh, so anyways, once you're ready to go, you head down to the bottom here and click on the dumb button down here. Uh, actually, the apply and save button. But before we do this, we're going to go down here to the management screen. And if you didn't like the name you gave it, you can always just change it. For example, I'm going to change this one from sensitivity. I'm basically going to call this uh, my sport plane one, the one that uh, is a little more sensitive than a larger aircraft. Uh, so I'll go ahead and put that in here. Once I'm done, uh, then you just simply click on the OK button here to uh, save your changes. And now it has that name there. Uh, and then we have to go back. And you'll see the new name up here uh, in the controller selection, where you can select between which one. And by the way, you have to confirm when you change the profile. OK, so anyways, we've got all that done. Uh, we're checking it out. We want to check on each one of these and make sure you save that correctly. Again, I'm back in the default, so everything's back to zero. So uh, we're good to go on that. So we didn't affect the default profile. So once I have that, I'm in the, back in the default profile. I can start making another one. Uh, this time, I'm going to do a, a different one. And I, depending upon how I want to change, I can do the same thing with all those. But it automatically asks you, hey, create a new profile as soon as you start changing things. So I'm going to call this airliners, OK? Because it's going to be the one that I choose when I do jumbo jets or uh, the A20, A320, or the 747. 
Now, if you think about it, it makes sense. Not because planes are different, because that's built into the models, but because there are so many controllers that each person's reflexes are different, even on the same make and model of controller. So originally I did one that configured the aircraft, but you may not do yours the same as mine. All you have to do is remember is to say apply and save when you're done with the one you're, doing, you're working on so that it is, those configuration changes are accepted into that profile. Now I did the same thing for smaller planes. I went into the aircraft selection screen and selected one. Now high wingers are notoriously more stable uh, than the low wingers. Uh, but I happen to like flying the uh, low wingers. Uh, matter of fact, this one was in the old flight simulator. Very responsive, very uh, tricky uh, to operate. Therefore, you need to adjust your controllers. So let's go out here and make a flight plan uh, to check it out. So in case you haven't investigated it, it's very easy to bring up a map and just click on some airports to uh, set your departure and arrival airports. So I did this on a short hop here. Well, so I can test out that uh, new uh, airplane that I just modified. Okay, so I've gone ahead to the airport. I'm sitting in my uh, cockpit. I'm going to change the camera to external so we can see uh, how the surfaces respond to input. Uh, let me check gas. Okay, I got gas. I'm good there. Okay, so I'm uh, pretty much ready to take off. Okay, so here I've just taken off, and uh, it's hard to tell because you don't see me operating a yoke, but this thing is extremely sensitive to input. Uh, just a little bit left or right or up or down, and the plane reacts uh, violently. Now, it should because it's a sports plane, but it's you know, beyond that. It's uh, very, very sensitive. So, let's apply the new setting. Now, what's good about this is that you can just hit press the escape key and get back to your menu system, go over to controls, Come over here, and you can see right now how it's set up. It's changing to sports plane mode. Say apply and save, and then go back, and then hit escape here, okay, or go back to the system. And now I'm flying with new controls. Again, it looks like it's a little jerky, but it's nowhere near as sensitive as it was before. I can fly much more controlled and level and respond exactly the way I want. And you can play with this until you're comfortable that it's responding to your input the way you want to be able to do it. So once you've gone in and out and satisfied it, got it all set up your way you want, you're safe to go back and get out of the program, exit flight simulator anytime you want to, uh, and that profile will be there for the next time you want to use it. Now just for another example, uh, here I am on the ground, and you can actually see the control services move as I manipulate my joystick. Uh, you can see the up and down on the elevators, for example. Uh, you may want to change your angle so you can see uh, even better. Okay, but you get a used to it, and then you can see whether or not it feels like uh, they're responding correctly before you even fly. But now you'll see here I went to the configuration screen, and I actually was in the wrong one. So I had to switch over here before I left, say apply and save, so I can get back to the aircraft, and now I'm using the correct controller settings for that particular aircraft. Then, of course, once you're in the air, you can still make adjustments to it then by skipping back to the configuration screen, uh, playing with the adjustments until they're down to exactly the way you want that particular aircraft to respond to you. And again, you have as many profiles as you like. For You can have multiple ones for every aircraft. You can have ones for each and every aircraft. Uh, just makes flying a lot easier when you calibrate it this way. So again, you can go in here before you start up and uh, go ahead and configure stuff. But it's actually easier to do it in flight because then you can switch back and forth without having to reload the flight every time. And just go in here and make sure you set up the controllers for the actual aircraft, save it, uh, apply it when necessary. So I hope you enjoy this uh, quick tutorial. I could spend hours in here uh, configuring a whole bunch of things. But set your basics, learn about it, apply them, save them, and use them when necessary. Hey, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like this video. And if you want to get more, just subscribe to Old Guy Geek. You can also follow me at Facebook or Twitter. The links to those are in the description of this video.